Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm Joe Jaspi, and that is 2021 Topps Gypsy Queen Baseball. Five box, random team break number two. One spot gets you two teams, and all cards ship. A lot of fun stuff in Gypsy Queen. What have we got? All new Captain's Mini autographs, and the return of the rare autograph lineup cards. All right, so a lot, lot of fun stuff here. Big thanks to this group for getting in on the action. Appreciate it. One spot gets you two, so let's uh, double up. Uh, uh. And all 30 teams are in. Let's roll it and randomize names and teams 11 times. Five and a six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 11 the final time. I did not, Jack. I did not read the article in the WAPO about sport. This collector from SoCal used to clean pools. And now what does he do? He just only collects? So after 11, we got Nick down to Nick. Nick K down to Nick K. Five and a six, 11 times for the teams. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. The final time. After eleven times, we got the tribe down to the Jays. All right, so here's how it shakes out. Nick, you have the Indians. Mary with the Padres. Sean with the Rangers. Corey, last spot emoji, got my Dodgers. Ben with the Orioles. John with the Rockies. Stephen K with the Giants. Sean with the Angels. Corey with the Red Sox. Ben with the Astros. Leo with the Mariners. Eric with the Cardinals. Harry with the Pirates. Michael with the Braves. Harry with the Diamondbacks. Sean with the Reds. Stephen K with the Brew Crew. John with the Marlins. Michael with the White Sox. Corey with the A's. Sean with the Rays. Mary with the Nationals. Harry with the Mets. Leo with the Yankees, Chris with the Phillies, Eric with the Tigers, Corey with the Twins, Chris with the Cubs, Harry with the Royals, and Nick with the Toronto Blue Jays. Let's sort by column B by team. I'm going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. Then we'll have the break stick around. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, folks. Still 3 nothing Yankees in the top of the seventh. The Red Sox are trying to threaten again. No deals were done here on Sunday the 18th here in 2021. Tops Gypsy Queen Baseball. Random team break number two. Big thanks everybody here for getting in on the action. Now, I don't know what popped in the first half, but let's see what we have here. Good luck. Two, auto, two on-card autographs per box. Bellinger on the front here. A lot, a lot of fun parallels and short prints to chase. I think there are box hoppers here too. There are. So we'll save that for the end of the box. All card ship, and we'll do a, we'll do a little recap at the end. Otani has thirty fourth home run today. David Fletcher had like a twenty six game hitting twenty four twenty six game hitting streak going. Broken today, went over. There are some baseball records that I think are just out of reach just because of the way the game has changed in terms of like wins that pitchers may have, you know, just because pitchers, starters don't go as deep into games anymore. And and um, you know, like there's a lot, so much more specialized relief pitching. 
So a lot of those pitching records can get a little weird in the in, in the future. So those, some there may be some old records that may not be broken. But that that hit streak, <laughs> that hit streak, I think is is made even more difficult because of that specialized relief pitch, pitching too. I don't know if that's ever going to be broken. Kike. Kike Hernandez can be pretty clutch. He's got curveball, curveball, fastball, curveball. You're going another curveball. No, it was a fastball. Lines out to center. Yankees are out of that inning. How was your pitch, Kike? All right, box number one. All right, good luck. Was there a booklet in the first half? I'd like to see another book too. Some mini cards there. Yeah, it, Vlad Jr. I would I would like to see him with a triple crown as well. And there's our first autograph. There's his teammate, Kevin Biggio. And that'll make the, uh, the that'll make the MVP race really interesting. Thirty-seven out of ninety-nine. I think Trout one year had a better war, for whatever that's worth, wins above replacement, had a better war than Miguel Cabrera, but Miguel Cabrera had a triple crown, and so uh, I like these tarot cards here, what do they do, um, but they gave the, the MVP to Miguel Cabrera because of the triple crown. That'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Sometimes these can be numbered. There's Yelich to 250. Got a different parallel here. That's 99, Joey Gallo for the Rangers. That'll be for Sean O. Blue Jays, by the way, Nick Koba has the Blue Jays. Gets that Kevin Biggio autograph. The Brewers, Yelich numbered card will go to Stephen K. Feel a little bit, a little bit thicker this year. There's a good stock to it. I think that might be a font swap parallel. This is why all cards ship. There's a lot of, there's a lot of different variations in short print that you can find in there. Oh, and a redemption. So I would consult CardboardConnection.com. I think they have a pretty good rundown of what the different parallels are. There's Max Fried for the Braves to 250. And there's our second autograph. That's for the Rangers. That's Anderson Tejada. Sean O'Leary with the Rangers. Wait, so if that's a redemption, there, there are th 
We've got three autographs? Two on-card autographs per box, but there was two autographs and then a redemption. A oh, bonus auto. There's Lindor to 50. the backs of the cards really quick. Sometimes there can be a different backs on the cards as well. So nothing too crazy there. Lindor, black and white to 50 for the Mets. That's for Harry. There's Max Fried for the Brave. That's for Michael. And the Bravos. And behind Eddie Rosario, you are due to receive, congratulations by the way, you are due to receive a autograph indigo parallel of, I think I have a checklist of, what is, what is indigo number two, I think 250 maybe, or those are base parallels, what about autographs? Indigo autographs, I think 150? Of Chicago White Sox or Chicago Cubs, it's Andrew Vaughn of the Chicago White Sox. I like that how they print the team name right there too. I'll have to mark up the redemption. Now to go to Michael Brinson and the Shy Sox. Bonus auto here. And here is the three chrome cards in this box topper. Got Anthony Rizzo, Kiber Ruiz, and Christian Pache. All right, next box. Yeah, so Vlad's at 31 now. Is that enough to win the that enough to win the MVP? Wow, Odor tattoos one. He knew it right away. 418 feet, 104 miles per hour exit velo. He knew it right away, he hit it, dropped the bat. You know, I kind of thought I thought it was going to be the the hawk too, for a second there. The Yankees, the Yankees are up 5 nothing in the bottom of the seventh. They're doing this, I think, without a number of players who are who are in the, the COVID protocol.
Second box out of the five. Good luck. And there's another Rangers autograph. That's Leody Tavares. Sean O'Leary. I like that. I like that Gypsy Queen design. We got uh, Ryan Castellani to 199 for the Rocks. That'll be for John and the Rockies. So these are one of the variations, the bazooka backs. I don't know how short printed this is, but this goes to uh, the Giants. Mike Yastrzemski, Stephen K with the Giants. It's cool though. Still looking for our second autograph out of the box. Got a Daniel Johnson to 99. And another redemption, and it's, yeah, it's Andrew Vaughn again for the White Sox. So, Michael Brinson, I guess you're starting your Andrew Vaughn PC, whether you intended to or not. Oh, Ben pulled a Yachty Aussie dual auto booklet out of a blaster of Gypsy Queen a couple years ago. That's crazy. So that redemption is our second autograph, unless we get a bonus like the first one. So they were just, I don't know if you heard Buster only saying, he's like, he hasn't heard anything definitive, but apparently that, um, apparently they're just looking, uh, teams are monitoring the Yankee situation, basically. Here are the uh, font swaps right there. Oh, sorry. The, this Vaughn was a black and white parallel. So the first one was Indigo. And the second one was black and white, so at least there are some different, different ones. It's kind of weird. Yeah, they're not actively looking to trade Aaron Judge, but I guess speculation from other front offices is that they're looking at what that what the situation is going to be. Basically, if the if the Yankees COVID situation drags on or gets worse or if they lose a lot of games in that 
during that protocol window. Wow, that would be wild. And that's the uh, the no name right here for the pirates. That's going to be Harry. Can't imagine they'd actually do that, would they? The Yankees. All right, box three. All right, do we have uh, any other? Let's go to MLBTradeRumors.com. Oh, forgot about those box toppers. We got Kershaw, Aaron Nola, and Kershaw number 31 out of 99. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Gavin Lux leaves game with hamstring injury. I don't like that. Jazz Chisholm and Garrett Cooper leaving the Marlins game due to injuries. Michael Lorenzen on the 10-day IL. MLB hoping to return to nine-inning doubleheaders plus modified with the modified extra innings rules in 2022. I'm not sure if I like that. Cardinals locked up their first-round pick. Michael McGreevy. Hmm. Darren O'Day season likely over after a significant hamstring injury. Angels promote uh, Brandon Marsh. So I guess if you have a position on Brandon Marsh, keep an eye on him. Charlie Marte reportedly rejects Marlins' $30 million extension offer. DeGrom, yeah, you hear that? DeGrom went on the IL today. Right forearm soreness, never good to hear that. That's what Kershaw is working his way back from. Lindor's on the 10 day IL. Hey, good for Lance Lynn. He's having a good season. Lance Lynn and the White Sox agree to a two year, $38 million extension. Cubs will reportedly try again on Rizzo and Baez extensions before exploring trades. Nationals, Nationals have interest in Chris Bryant. I think a lot of teams, I think Chris Bryant's going to be linked to a lot of teams. There was that Cole Hamels showcase. I wonder where Cole Hamels will end up. That final basketball mixer filler sold out. Nice. Good. There was rumor that Mets wanted to trade DeGrom and a few others for Bryant. I don't think they'd ever trade DeGrom. Someone just, what is this? Like, who started that rumor, Rex? Some kid on Twitter? I could see them doing Cindergard and a few others for Chris Bryant. But, like, that sounds like a rumor started by a very optimistic, like, Cubs fan. <laughs> Without any... If there's any basis in that, I think that would be wild. Like, it, if it actually came from, like, sources say... That would probably be. Why would they give a? They're. I mean, they're in a playoff position. Giving up Degrom. I 
There is uh, Andy Young, Harry and the Diamondbacks. Bleacher Report? Is Bleacher Report... Is that just like a... What was the context of that rumor? Because that would be crazy. Is it just someone saying... Is someone just speculating? Or did someone... Did this person actually... Are, are they actually hearing something from front offices? That's a huge difference. Because, I mean, I could just make up trades too and make up rumors at that point too. Of those. Yeah, Degrom did get hurt again. He's back on. He's back on the IL, which probably further's moves down his trade value. Not that, not that I think the Mets wouldn't trade him, but. Well, hi Matthew Stubblefield. Well, Rex is saying he heard a rumor that the Mets want to trade Degrom and a few others for Bryant, for Chris Bryant which does not seem to make any sense at all. So that's so that, then I was ac asking Rex like surely this this isn't like an actual this is just pure speculation by like a a Cubs fan writing an opinion piece on on Bleacher Report. That's wishful thinking. Unless, unless that writer has sources close to sources in the front office, you know, unless it's something like that, which would still be shocking. There's Adonis Medina for the Phillies. That'll be for Chris. Right, I mean, at that point, I mean, that person was probably reporting <laughs> Miguel Cabrera's is going to go to, uh, Miggy's going to be traded for DeGrom. And behind McKinstry is Dane Dunning. Mets are definitely. I think the Mets should be in buying mode. White Sox, Michael. But I don't know if they're going to be. I'm not sure if they're going to be in selling mode. Not not a Degrom piece anyway. I could see I could see Syndergaard though. Myers, black and white. Will Myers for the Padres, that'll be for Mary and the Friars. Sounded good, but it's warning track power. All right, two more boxes to go. There's Chisholm, McKenzie, and Giancarlo Stanton. 99 almost took one yard. City of Oakland released a proposed financial plan regarding a development of a potential new waterfront stadium for the A's. Reports Sarah Vani of the San Francisco Chronicles that the A's are unhappy with the terms, which uh, team president Dave Cavill called a step backwards in this discussions. Yeah, what's going to happen with the A's?
The A's, A's have been looking in, into the possibility of relocation since May, with Las Vegas appearing to be the most likely destination for the two Oakland teams ending up in uh, ending up in Vegas. As a, oh, Ben's an A's fan, and they're leaving. I mean, it's 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 tough. It's a money thing. And it's I don't know. It's not it's not. I don't know if a county like a uh, I don't know if a county like Alameda County can afford to you know have like taxes tax money go to um, go to a stadium. It's a, it's a big luxury, but then you don't want to lose like a civic institution like the Oakland A's, but it might, might happen. Trivia question, says Rex. Did you find that Bleacher Report story? Um, what are the two oldest ballparks and what years they were built? Yeah, it's got to be Fenway and Wrigley. Fenway must have been built like 1898, 1903, something like that. I feel like Wrigley's around that time too. Aren't, aren't those both like really old ballparks? They were, yeah, they were probably built in 1492. No, Ben won't follow them to Vegas. Your new team will be the Padres. You're not gonna go, uh, not gonna go Giants. Regional team. Jackson, are you looking this up? 1912 and 1914. That's what Jackson's saying. I feel like that sounds about right. No, Giants have enough bandwagon fences, Ben. Yeah. Padres will be a fun team to watch. If you're a free agent. Nice. For the Mets, Ali Sanchez, 51 out of 99. Oh, you saw it playing MLB The Show. Fenway is 1914. Wrigley is 1916. Here's, that's out of 99 for the Mets. That'll be for Harry. Dylan Carlson to 50. For the bazooka backs as well. You got Garrett Crochet to 250 for the uh, for the White Sox.
Braxton Garrett to 150 for the Marlins. That's going to be for John. And for the fish, that is Lewin Diaz, 136 out of 150. That must be the indigo parallel. It looks pretty sharp. That goes to John R. and the Miami Marlins. So, wait, so if the A's leave, do you think they really go to Vegas? They'll have to. I think Vegas will build them a new stadium. They've got a Triple A park out there, but I don't know if that's going to be. Oh, Red Sox walked in a run. I don't know. I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if that Triple A stadium can be expanded or even used as a major league stadium. Although it might actually be better than the Oakland Coliseum. We got a Mookie Betts to 199 for the Dodgers. It's me for Corey. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, Jackson. It'd be, it'd be like the Oakland would have would have had their their two big teams go to go to Vegas. Right, Matt Matthews. Right, if Vegas gets an MLB team, P. Rose has got to be into the Hall of Fame that very day. There's Kiever Ruiz, no name. And we got a Miggy Miguel Cabrera to 99. That's right, the Warriors did lead too, but they're still in the area. They're they're just right across the the bay. But, but yeah, but they're technically out of the, the city of, of Oakland. All right, final box. Ooh, that was your pitch. Can have the Kings. No, the Kings just built a new arena. Sparkly new arena not too long ago, Matthew. Kings aren't going anywhere. They, they, at one, they once thought, at one point, it seemed like the Kings were going to go. But they sold the team, got new ownership, and they built a new arena. So I don't think the Kings are going anywhere for a long time. Jack's asking you trivia question, which two teams played in the first formal game of North American style football? Oh, is that another run walked in? I say it was the... I say it was the, the, the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Cardinals. <laughs> I 
Yeah, no worries, Matthew. I sometimes I forget too, because I was like, oh yeah, the Sacramento Devon is like, oh no, that's right. Hint, 1874. I mean, the Lake Erie Muskrats versus the, you know, the, 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 the Charleston Meat Packers. No, that would be the Green Bay, but... The Charleston Foxtrots. So two different dances. There's Luis Robert to, to, uh, to 99. Yeah, <laughs> the Bean Eaters, yeah. Boston Bean Eaters versus the Brooklyn Bridegrooms. It has to be some like random city that you would you wouldn't think would ever have a professional football team if it wasn't for the fact that it was 1874. The answer is Harvard. I was gonna go universities next. I wasn't gonna go Harvard though. Harvard. I'm gonna go like Yale versus the. The New York Golden Knights or something like that. Here's Josh Hader to 199. No, it's Harvard versus Jack V's alma mater, McGill. Playing in 1874, the first formal game. I guess not professional game. There you go. First formal game of North American style football. When they use their feet. Who would have thought that that game that those college kids were playing back then, that 150 years later or whatever, turns out to be billion dollar industry, billions, billions of dollars. Front is that sunny gray? I think looks like from the picture. Any more bazooka backs? I like those bazooka back cards. Wonder what the line was on that game. I'll tell you the total was probably the total was probably seven. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe uh, maybe Harvard minus one and a half. There is Jonathan Aruz, Arauz, Aruz, Arauz. Oh, where I got the other thing, Corey with the Red Sox. What was what was the score in that game, Jack? Do you have do you have box score for us at this point? different that's up to 250 all right noted Brandon thank you I know, it gets a little weird this time of day. There's always like a two-hour window in the day. It's fine, Brent. Don't worry. 
I've been doing this for a while. I don't need any backseat driving. But it does. I, I do acknowledge that it does get dark at certain points of the day. So, something that we deal with when that powerful California sun bursts through that window there. Abreu going to the Yankees. That'll be for Leo. That's fine. It's not like it's pitch black. It's James Karinchek for the tribe. Zach Ranky. All right, and that's that. Let's see what's in the box, Hopper. So that grand keys to 150. Could be a chrome auto in this last pack. Also, Brandon, you could just turn your brightness up on your mind. There's Mankata, Devers, and Marcus Simeon. Check that, too. All right. Here's a quick little recap, autographs. Some nice parallels, some nice colors. A couple Andrew Vaughns in here as well. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was 2021 Topps Gypsy Queen Baseball, five box, uh, random team break number two from jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.